Albuquerque Public Schools re reinstated and then lifted its 1,200 copies per student limit. Teachers have been printing out essays and other texts for students and encouraging them to take notes on the pages and write in the margins, something they can't do in school textbooks because research shows students learn better by interacting with the materials. They feared cutting back on copies would hamper teaching, but district officials fear a repeat of last year when APS went $700,000 over their $2 million budget for copying. Tom, two easy questions here. A lot of other districts are dealing with this by giving their students iPads, what's right in front of you. You can do whatever you need to do and take notes and all that kind of thing. This seems like a 1950s argument to me. Something seems very out of phase here to not be able to write in textbooks. That's fine, but can we solve the problem? It, it's interesting. Yeah, there, are a lot of, there are a lot of potential solutions, including yeah. copies. Um, but, you know, the teachers need to be able to, you know, provide the text and the, you know, the textbooks sure. and the textbooks aren't there. So copies are really only it. Mm -hmm. You know, iPads have been uh, suggested, other tablets uh, that mm -hmm. you're looking at additional expense. Right. Uh, so it really comes down, in my opinion, it's a management issue. That's right. I don't think it's being managed well. Right. A $2 million budget for copies. That would shock a lot of people, I would think. It's a lot of dough for making copies. On a copies. billion dollar industry with the largest school district in our state and right. the 25th largest one in the country. Please, this is penny wise, pound foolish, and absolutely ridiculous. But what's sad is, when my kids were in school, we had the same issue. And not only did I take right. Kleenex to school, I took copy paper. Right. Why are we treating our teachers this way? Right. They know what the children need to learn. Give me a break. I agree with you totally. You know, has anybody else done that? Brought reams of paper to their kids' school yes. at the beginning of the school. Is that the most amazing thing when you do that? Eric, well, you know, I just think mm -hmm. again, you, you can, this is a great example of you can't have it both ways. Yeah. You can't you can't say we can cut the education budget. We need free spending. You know, the, the schools are sort of fat and happy, sure. and they get everything they need. And teachers are making too much money, and they don't work hard enough. And then every time something like this comes up, right. we say, Oh, I can't believe right. that they don't have enough resources. <laughs> I think we, we you can't throw money at the problem. We've never tried throwing money mm -hmm. at the problem. Mm -hmm. I, that's a very good point there. Laura Sanchez, your thought? And you said bring reams of paper. I, I've, I don't have children, so I've never done that, but I've brought yeah. reams of paper from home for my work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how kind That's of nonprofits true. at times I've worked for. <laughs> I don't think you'd be alone. Uh, I don't, yeah, nonprofits, it's a tough recycle, job. Recycle, recycle, recycle. Um, but, you know, I do think this is for their budget and mm -hmm. the amount that, that they paid some of their executives and right. that they've had to pay out in contracts right. that didn't, you know, whatever. I mean, I think that they could find that money elsewhere. I think to nickel and dime teachers and students is the worst place to try to impose this kind of, and I, I agree with Tom, it's bad management. They got an earful, didn't they? You can just tell. They really got an earful on this one. It's interesting.